Hey and welcome back to CK2. I uh, I'm happy to have you back here on this game. It's a fun game, and I just refamiliarized myself a little bit with it since it's been a few days since I played the previous episodes. And yeah, so let's recap here quickly for myself and for you. We are playing the Count Verna, who's become a hunter and who still owes money to Jewish moneylenders, which I think is a small ambition of mine to to repay that money since uh, I think it's just in his interest to potentially do that. He's a humble, diligent guy. I think he wants to leave this earth with no debts. At least that's my feeling. And then one thing I noticed, <laughs> maybe I missed this uh, in the previous episode or something, um, but we have a strong claim on the Duchy of Franconia. And how did we get that? Did I misread something in the previous episodes where we got a claim on the Franconian... Um, Thing. We're right now in Würzburg fabricating a claim on Würzburg. We're trying to get that. And previously I thought we got a claim on Aschaffenburg or something. That is crazy. So basically what that means is we have our niche here, who is actually a pretty okayish guy, a little bit wrathful, I would say. Uh, how we how do we relate to him? He's not super um, happy about the leash, but also not super unhappy about him. He's the Duke of Franconia and the Duke of Hessen. So he owns all of this area and we have essentially a way to claim Franconia. So the southern part here, which would give us control over Mainz, Würzburg, Aschaffenburg and Bamberg, who is currently the marshal. Um, this is our sort of rival in jest, uh, I guess. The question is though, we became less ambitious in the previous episode. We are pretty stubborn though and diligent. Humble plays a bit against that. I'm just thinking, does that make sense for us to pursue that thing given our age? We have the, still the ambition to get a title and gain more land. And I think we've seen that the realm is really unstable right now with the invasion of Saxony. They're currently fighting over getting this territory here. These heathens that are right in the middle of, of Germany here, they've established themselves again, uh, Slavic heathens. And our king is completely incapable of actually doing anything against that. Where's the seat anyway? Where does our... Ah. <laughs> Alright. The, the capital city here, which is uh, located here in Paderborn, of all places, uh, is already sieged down and the, the king is just incapable of managing his army to, to fight those heathens. At least for now. And it seems still, like, for me, confusing because he has 4,000 troops in theory. But here, we see that he only has 898 of 4,700. They're just not reinforced, but he also hasn't raised vessel armies, I guess. Why? Why do, does he not raise vessel armies to fight off this this thing? It's just completely, completely incapable. Uh, for me, completely un unintelligible. So I think maybe that's one reason why our Count Werner might want to be in a bit more powerful position to play a little bit more in the bigger leagues and get Franconia under him so that he is now then would be a duke and would give them have more power to perhaps pursue things so that's how i'm justifying it but let's just take a look here we have here our leash has only 1658 so that's not a significant amount of money in fact it's not a significant amount of troops because we do have almost as much as he does the question gen that just is like do we want to get mercenaries i think he also has enough money to get mercenaries at least for a little bit. We have a little bit more money right now. So we kind of do want to probably save up a bit more money before we go and pursue this. And um, I'm going to let the game run for a little bit here now just to, to get back into it and see how this war resolves. So he's going for the, for the siege here, which is not too stupid. That might have been also a good way for us to potentially get some money, right? So there can be loot, there can be money looted here, basically by sieging them down. Not sure if I could siege them down without joining the war. Uh, although there's nothing against joining the war essentially, because we're anyway in it, uh, so to speak, because we're a vassal of a vassal. So let's just join the war, and we're gonna raise up our troops here and just get them back up here, and then casually siege down. So we have Hicha, that's fine. 
So King Bruno is happy that we're joining. But he's gonna get uh, killed off by the invaders. Yeah, so we already lost, so there is no... No other way to say it. They've conquered another part of Germany, these heathens. Insanity. And there are some more raiders here. So let's watch our, our leash. Oh my god, our leash has so much money. Where'd he get that? Wait, he revoked the county of Würzburg from Duke? And he put his capital here? <laughs> no way. You put it in Würzburg? And you just revoked that title? That's Firstly also, that's like bad for us because of course we had the ambition to, to get Würzburg as part of it being, you know, de jure. Well, de jure actually Worms doesn't even belong to it. But for sure it, it would have been a thing that we would have liked. But that means like our leash here made himself uh, a little bit of a had, had himself now in a little bit of a conflict with the with the king. So why is the king doing that? Maybe he was too close to the Yeah, I didn't want to get his stuff sieged down and he saw Witzburg is a nice place to be. But that is insane. And our guy here is leading troops in Turingen, so he's just sitting there leading the troops of... Uh, he's a commander of Germany. Yeah. So currently he doesn't actually have so many troops now, because he lost Würzburg, that's right, he lost Würzburg, that's why he doesn't have so many troops. Oh, this is interesting. But of course now with the money situation as it is, uh, he can afford to get some uh, mercenaries and he would he definitely would so it would be nice if he lost a little bit of that money the question just is like do they lose a lot of money i'm not sure about that actually maybe if he gets kidnapped or something has to get pay some stuff out or he builds up some of the domain that would be the ideal place if he just put money into building something I did, a hundred somewhere. So, Albrecht, one of our sons. So what do we educate him in? He is currently smart, and I think like some of the later sons, like a church career is definitely still in the books for him. Okay, so uh, your leash forced the Duke of Thuringia to join a faction. What faction could that be? Do we can we can we see that like uh, a faction in Germany? I guess it's probably something something interesting. I would bet. <laughs> probably something against the king. I, I would bet. Like there's a revolution coming, probably at some point here. So we have 1.2. So what we could do is we could get mercenaries. It's a bit gamey. We could get mercenaries and then a German holy war for Rügen. That's what we're up to. That's what we're up to. We're doing holy war for Rügen now. For this little place. Not like for, for this. <laughs> Maybe not for Saxony. No. We're doing the little island. Uh, at least the white stack was sighted. So that's a good thing. And yes, our children are lacking a little bit of focus, so... Our son Werner. Oh, we named one of our sons Werner accidentally. I didn't want to do that, actually. So... For him, I think I'm just like... I like pride as the first thing. I think it's a good education focus for a ruler or potential rulers. Isentrude. Um, yeah, she's intrigueful. She's a bit good with fighting. I think like here stewardship makes sense. That she makes a good good wife who manages finance as well. Not that woman manage finances here, I guess, because I'm the guy who's managing it. Uh, I'm the steward, after all. So we are at a good level with our retinue. So let's take a look at our leash. He has, sorry, that's our not our leash, that's our king. 
Let's look at our leash here. He has 1.1. He still has like quite a lot of money, but I also have a lot of money now. Fruitlessly scouring the countryside, I come up on a small cottage in the wilds. As you look, an old crone opens, and here they, they she wants to sell us a potion. I think I'm not going to go for that. So as soon as we would attack him, we would get... Oh, this is nice. Like, yeah, Siege Town. No, not that I thought this was my Leech's capital. <laughs> that would be nice if you could Siege Town something. Uh, the question is actually, we could have joined that and maybe gotten a bit of money out of it. Like, uh, that one option. I think the it's they who own Rügen. Wester, Wester Godland. Oh, they're quite big in the middle of nowhere up there. That's too cold and too far away, I think, though. And raising the army also costs money, but if they were to go against Saxony, I would have joined and like gotten, I think, a good money out of it. So we could recruit a court physician. I think at our age, I think it's definitely needed to have a court physician. So let's take a look at it. We're sending out some messengers to scour the land for it. After a while, you spread the word that you're seeking to employ a court physician, and one of the priests from Worms arrives at your court. The cynical priest introduces himself as... Gautzelin, the monk, and expresses a wish to serve you, although seeing as his individual is shunned by the rest of the priests. Okay, interesting. Why is he shunned? Renowned physician, a monk, a mystic, temperate, proud, content, cynical. So I'm no longer like a salad. So I think I've seen that maybe we don't need necessarily as to be as dedicated, but a cynical is still a little bit bad. He is a good person though, he's lowborn, a monk. I think monks are generally pretty okay, so I think I'm gonna go with that. Seems like a good place for me to have one. And let's keep another eye on our guy here. We're doing a holy war and we would fall into his, his backside a little bit while he's out on the field in Holstein fighting the heathens. It's not very honorable. Hmm. Where are they go? What are they doing? A Catholic uprising. Oh, that's nice. And I have a claim on Würzburg if I want to. Now that is interesting, since it's the place of the leash. But since we're saving up money, I think it's not something we want right now. And we don't want to anger the... Actually, we should have changed this already. Improve relations with the Lord. Yeah, let's talk to the king. I think that makes sense since we might be his vassal soon. Yeah, so what I was thinking earlier is like when you raise mercenaries, initially they will be at no morale, I believe. So another son. How am I getting so many sons? How old is she? 37, okay. Oh no, that's not mine. <laughs> that's not mine. <laughs> Uh, how old is mine? 55? Oh no, it was, well, sorry, it was one of my sons. Sons, I think, yeah. He named him Konrad, like, after himself. The first one he named after me, Werner. Okay, so I'm probably super confused about who's doing what, but, like, yeah, that's... I was confused, okay. So my son named one of his children after me, and now the second one he named after himself. How oh, nice. And now we are suddenly in a lot of wars, so let me just check that. So we are here in the Austrian-German De Jura over Freistadt. Um, who's the Austrians? They're a Hungarian vassal. And they're Tengri. They want to conquer here Freistadt. That is mm, pretty nasty. How weak is our king that he is attacked by so many people now? Then we have the Summering Conquest of Dithmarschen. Then this Dirk of the German Revolts War for Germany. Are you kidding me? Now the, the Dutch are, are also fighting. So yeah, the King of Germany is in all positions a little bit screwed. Um, particularly this stupid war here. Uh, no, but, oh, this one is already over, I guess. Right? I believe it's over, already over. Okay, but then hopefully the, the king can manage to, to soothe those things. And he moved out of Würzburg. Where did he give Würzburg to? Duke of Munster. Why? He's his son. Heir to the Kingdom of Germany. It's very much his son, I think, right? But it's a bit different dynasty. Uh, 
Okay. So our leash is now at less money than we have, and he's at less troops than we have. I think this might be the time to do it, even though we're in a very chaotic situation here. We are going to do it. So declaring a war for Franconia. Although, quickly checking, my idea was to get the mercenaries first, so that we can get them some morale. So let's take a look at it. I'm looking particularly for not so expensive mercenaries that have still like a bunch of troops. So 120, but they're already hired out. So a lot of them are hired out. That's also a good limitation that could help us. So we could afford it for a little bit. I would try to get one like that. Lithuanian band. That is not super expensive per month. 150. 150 and then 10 per month. I think that's the ones we want to hire the Saxon band. So they're coming all the way here from Saxony, have been thrown out. So just in case he hires also mercenaries, I want to get my mercenaries a little bit of morale first. So that's it. Claiming Franconia. And we will raise our troops and then head here. So yeah, that first battle went, of course, pretty well. And now it's the question how we going to do that. So we have two troops here, so could we siege it down? Yes, we could. And do a second one where we just... Uh, so we have the Saxon band leader on the left side, we have me in the center. Do I want to be in the center? I think I would want to see this as my last hurrah. So I think it makes sense for me to, to, do, to do that. And I will pursue them. So he's improving with the guy who lives now in Würzburg, which is not the king. So and let's go to here to Thuringia, where the king wants to live, apparently. And we are resolved, we're trying to get them pursued so that they get killed off completely, ideally. And another battle successfully won. Let's go up here to just... Uh, he is trying to get to Regensburg. Yeah, we want to deny them the ability to to get themselves organized. And now go to Frankfurt and siege down that as well. Yeah, he's now improving with the king. He's a very capable person to do that. That's great. So now we are too little here to actually do that. So can we get a few troops over there to just reinforce that army? So my daughter, Relinda. Oh, now is that I forgot to marry a few people off, I guess. So Air Ernfried here. That should be done. Yes, sorry, sorry. I am super sorry, guy. I, I thought they could, they could like do that by themselves, but they can only if uh, they get actually some land. So priority would be to marry German, I think, and then something of rank would be appropriate, ideally. So a princess of West Francia could be still okay. Definitely not too old or too young. I think like 16 would be great. Your cynical is a bit not too nice. A patient from Poman. So this seems for example like a pretty good match. So her skills also seem to be pretty smartly placed. So we're going to ask to marry this courtier for my son, my second son. My first son already has lots of kids of course. So we're going to also find a nice wife for Albrecht who should find also in the similar vein somebody.
So here another Princess of West Francia. So this should be a great thing as well. Since we're an up and rising, maybe the, the king also would like to have me as an ally. Uh, and then lastly, we have a daughter here who is uh, already way in the age of getting getting a husband. So there's quite a few good options here actually, but they are a little bit far away. Basque, also stressed, greedy people. Georgians makes no sense, it's way too far away. Armenians makes no sense. It Italians, but he's in prison, I think that makes a little bit less sense. And then they get too young already. Bosnian, Scottish, Welsh. Here, nice German count of Saarbrücken, 17 years old. Yeah, that seems like a pretty good match. Let's let's propose that. So she's sick, however, so let's get the court physician to heal her before she gets married. And he is uh, accepting my proposal for the for the betrothal. They all do, right? So that seems good. And my son's children. Let's take a quick peek at them. 14 years old. Let's also find a good match for her before they all gone from the market. So likewise here, it would be great if it was somebody of some importance. So a French count seems reasonable of 11 years old. And then he has another daughter, 11. Yeah, here we can try to get another count, 11, 11, seems also great, great match. And then we can take a look at our next son, Werner. And I think here it's not as priority yet because we do have a few years here, but I'll probably forget. So it makes sense to try to take a look at it. So court in Swabia. That seems reasonable. So for now, let's let's go with this and uh, let us siege down here. Okay, one sec. My wife has not been herself lately. I've noticed that she's lost weight and has overcome episodes of int intense fatigue. Apparently, the underlying cause is a con con cancerous growth, which is sucking the life out of her. Oh my god. Sickness and death awaits us. Stop pestering me. Wow. He's brutal in his old age. I'm gonna make the war a little bit slower because otherwise we're gonna have issues. So we just siege down the top holding here, the church in Frankfurt. And here we're sieging down the next thing. Um, I do think we're gonna go for the attack here first because that's more important that we are not getting siege down here in the Weinsberg. Oh no, <sighs> my wife died while I'm in the war. Duchy of Swabia can be pressed for my son. That uh, <laughs> is very interesting also. Maybe an option for afterwards. Oh no, I gained the ca the, the trait incapable. One moment I'm shouting or orders surrounded by the Clanging of swords and fighting around me. The next, everything goes dark as the world slips away from me. Are those people concerned faces? Everything hurts. I just want to rest. And I've become incapable, which very likely means I am going to die very, very, very soon now. So my designated regent, I believe, is my, my son. So he's going to already take care of the affairs. Uh, so he will very much take take this to victory and now now let's just see that we're we can finish off this war with our leash uh, quickly enough perhaps for our guy to still see the result of it but this is terrible news of course we've uh, lost our wife we've lost our own life almost so we're carried home to Worms um, 
the court physicians are trying to make us comfortable, but things are not looking not looking good at all. In this case, I will assign here the mayor, the center, not a particularly great fighter, but uh, we have to make do with what we have for now. And we are pretty much going to win this war in a second. We're still influencing the, the king. This is uh, very, very sad news. So we're almost done, unfortunately, with playing with Werner here, it seems like. But he certainly left a legacy. And we almost uh, have the city of Katzenellenbogen. Oh, he's building a new holding here, a castle. The Prince Bishop of Mainz. Interesting. Just saw it that he added this. And there we are, 100% on everything. We could just wait here just a second because we're going to see Chur down the Bishopric of Loach and uh, maybe get a little bit of money from that to recoup our losses in this war. You can see that actually the uh, soldiers have been very expensive. So we're offering peace or demanding peace, in fact. And we are imprisoning also the Duke of Hessen. Is that right? That is insane that we actually have him also imprisoned, I think. Um, we could ransom him out for 145 gold as, so to speak, war reparations. And I think that is appropriate. I, I think in this situation he wouldn't hold a grudge. Like, Well, I wouldn't hold a grudge. I'm sure that he would, to be fair. Especially since he basically has a ownership over the, the domains that the king holds, in fact. So let's just quickly take another peek at that. We have him as a prisoner. What is he actually his personal domains are? He has the weak claim on Thuringia. So one sec, he doesn't actually... He has the Duchy of Hessen and the city of Marburg. Huh. So Marburg is his only... Does he have any vassals anymore? Fritz... Fritzler, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he, he kept Frankfurt. I thought Frankfurt would go to us, actually. I mean, to be honest, I think... In this situation, we definitely want to regain the money. Of course, he has like the the he's only fourteen years old, forty nine years old. He probably might retaliate against our son, but I think in this situation, st still, we have to get recuperate recoup a little bit of the money that we that we expended here. So let's just take a look at our ownership here now. So we are the Duke of Franconia. So essentially, we gained two vessels here, which well, actually, Aschaffenburg we got directly. As a, as a as a domain and we gained our the devil of Bamberg as a oh he's an impaler a falconer deceitful patient trusting proud craven though proud and okay it's a good intrigueful man definitely we will not put him as our spy master I think that would be insane and uh, yes uh, that's it and essentially Würzburg is our our spy by de jour, so we could later reclaim that against the Rudolf of Münster, which we might do before he becomes the king, because he was previously the... I think we have some elective monarchy or something, right? Ah yeah, okay, I see, that's why he was in line for succession. And we have here, of course, the Poles, using the situation here, conquest of Brandenburg. So Germany is uh, definitely falling apart. And um, yeah, it's interesting though that like we have some such a mixture here of things. Like we have here Aschaffenburg, and here's the Bishopric of Loach, which is more like here, I think. It's definitely not like Aschaffenburg is Bavaria already. So Aschaffenburg is located here, and that side here is all Hessen. And up here, there's uh, what is it like uh, Seligenstadt or something? And down here is Lorsch. Like, this is definitely not geographically accurate uh, by any stretch. Um, but let's not be too, too concerned about that, I suppose. Uh, let's just enjoy our new domain. We have lining in here, and we're building some barracks here, which is uh, great for reinforcing the, the things. Uh, and it's been looted. 
and we have Bamberg guy. Okay, so let's just quickly see if we want to put Bamberg guy somewhere. Useful. So we have the mayor of Aschaffenburg, who is also a good person for that position. We don't have anybody here. He doesn't offer himself up for anything except Spymaster, where we cannot put him, because anyway, he's our regent, and also we don't think he's that... So one thing we can do is maybe make him like us a bit more. That's definitely an option. And we could appoint a better person here, but I think it's not really worth it. So I'm going to just ponder about this for a second if there's any changes I want to do, and I'll call the episode here. Uh, but thanks for, for coming with me on this little journey. Uh, it's been really exciting. Take care. Bye.